So here's the thing, at least for me, with Karthik Subraj's films, you never have to ask the should I go see it question. If you like films, if you like cinema, the answer is a no-brainer. Iravi is a bit of a departure for this director. It is a feminist film, but it's not one of those rara you go girl cliches. In the usual feminist film, we see the story through the women. But here, we follow the journeys of three sympathetic male characters. The first is a filmmaker named Arul, played by S.J. Surya. He's a director and his film is in the cans, being held hostage by a sadistic producer. So he's become an alcoholic. Then there's Michael, played by Vijay Setupati. He loves Malarvari, who's played by Pooja Devariya, but he marries Ponni, who's played by Anjali. Note that I keep saying played by. The film has many, many characters. There's Arul's wife, Yarini, played by Kamalini Mukherjee. And there's Jagan, the character that Bobby Sima plays. The story is seemingly about Arul's attempts to buy back his film from the producer. But the women form the crux. They are the collateral damage of these men being men. And in the middle of the obvious story about the men, and the subtextual story that eventually becomes the actual story, this one's about the women, you have a third level, the Easter eggs that Karthik Subaraj likes to bury in his films. Erebi has a ton of Ilaraja references, and I felt that the film is basically an note of Mani Ratan's Aiderith, specifically the Madhavan Meera Jasmine angle. Karthik Subaraj likes these shaggy dog stories that he then embellishes with almost novelistic detail. I love the way he introduces characters, the time he takes with them. Our films usually lay out characters and their relationship to each other the minute we set eyes on them. But Karthik Subaraj makes us wait to know how Arul is related to Jagan and where Michael fits in and so on and so forth. When it looked like a semblance of a plot was kicking in, it's something about Arul needing money to buy back his film. I dug out my phone and checked. It was a whole hour into the movie. The film is dense. It's packed with inf characters, with complications, with information doled out in bits and pieces. I could never predict where the film was going, which is a good thing. What these people were going to do, again a good thing. Though I found this to be the weakest of Karthik Subaraj's trademark twists. There's a subplot about stealing sculptures and that too I found rather conceity. Something half-heartedly cooked up to fit in with the title and the theme, rather than something plausible, something these people would actually do. But then, even in Jigatanda, I wasn't quite convinced that the characters would do the things they did. They seem to be puppets of a screenplay rather than credible human beings whose actions evolve organically from who they are or at least who they seem to be. But even if I'm not convinced by the overall trajectory of Karthik Subraj's characters, I love how fleshed out they are on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. I love the scene where Arul barges into Yarni's house after their separation on the day of her engagement to someone else. In a lesser film, she would have asked him to get out. But here, she rushes straight into his arms. She was frustrated, she was fed up with him. But she's also confused. Was she hasty in abandoning this man? Should she now move on to another man? Does she even need a man? This is what I meant. The main story may be about the men, but slowly the women take over. The pick of the performers are Anjali, who is raw and expressive in a way that she has never been, and S.J. Surya, who usually comes in all these creepy roles. I never dreamed he had such a capacity to hold the screen. Like all of Karthik Subaraj's films, Iravi comes together more in the head than in the heart, in the sense that it's easier to admire than to love wholeheartedly, but when the parts are so well crafted, I don't want to complain about their sum not adding up to a satisfying whole. For me personally, the biggest achievement of Iravi was that it made me fight with myself. Is it a good film or is it merely an okay film? What I do know that it's certainly a fascinating film. If you take a 180 degree turn from Iravi, you'll land up with a second film this week. Eril's Velaino Vandita Vellakaran. Every comedian has his time. This is Suri's time. He was the best thing about last week's Eden Amma Arle. He's one of the best things about this film. He plays a man who pretends to marry a woman. It's a long story. And then he finds out that she's a dancer with a very shady history. This is a great running gag, even if it is not milked to the maximum. Robo Shankar is the other showstopper. He plays an MLA named Jacket Janakiraman. He was a tailor once. And he gets what's easily the most laugh till you cry comedy stretch of the year. It's derived from the premise of Nadu La Konjam Pakata Kanon. He tells the same story over and over from the beginning. It's going to have a long afterlife on YouTube. But the script for a comedy is still a script. You may think up some good gags, but you still have to figure out what to do around those gags. And so we get a plot about the search for rupees 500 crore. This should have been enough. But you have to accommodate the hero Vishnu Vishal and the heroine Nikki Galrani. The film comes to a complete halt every time it turns to this couple. In our cinema, romance is really the death of comedy. 